Hello everyone and Houdini 19 got released a few days ago and there have been like a lot of tutorials on Houdini 19. So I was kind of sort of wondering what I should cover because I think pretty much everything's been covered. But as a person who makes a living making tutorials, it is compulsory that I should make a tutorial on new features in the latest release of a software because if you don't do that, then your uh, membership to the Tutorial Makers Club gets revoked immediately. Is there a Tutorial Makers Club? There, there should be one, right? Because, I mean, why not? There should be like a secret handshake and everything. But <laughs> anyways, uh, so this is this is fairly simple, right? So what I'm covering is uh, the new uh, features in the attribute adjust nodes, uh, because this is not like one of the big features. But this is pretty useful and uh, like there are a couple of additions and there are there are a few new nodes, but the new attribute adjust node stuff is pretty nice. Okay, so to get started, I'll just take a grid and I'm going to copy a box on it. So let me just take a box. So we'll just do a copy to points and yeah, let me just make it small and I'll get a few more points here. Okay, so this is fine. So the attribute adjust nodes go, were introduced, I believe in 18.5 or maybe 18, but I think 18.5. Anyway, so they've done a few new things in there. Okay, so firstly, let's just take an attribute adjust float. And the reason why the points have disappeared is because the default attribute that this is adjusting is p-scale. But let's change that, we'll call it mask. And let's do one thing, which is we'll set this mask to set always and we'll make it noise. And if you want to visualize it, you can click here and you know click on the mask name and there you go. So that's what your mask looks like. Now you can do a few things with this. Okay, the first thing that they've added to the attribute adjust node is that, I mean, previously you had only three options. You could do like constant, random and noise, but now you get a lot more. Okay, so this is a really useful option, which is, which is remap attribute. Okay. So what I can do is I can use the same noise value and have it uh, sort of run uh, or adjust like a whole bunch of different attributes. Something that you would usually do with, uh, with the, with, with the wrangle node, but now you can do it through the attribute adjust float. Okay. So let's say if I take another attribute adjust float and this will be P scale. But what I'll do is I'll set it to set always and change this to remap attribute and the default is kept to mask. So it's now picking up this value and setting it to P scale. But what is also nice is that not only can you remap it, but you can also sort of control the, you know, the additional, you know, you can, you can properly do like a fit range here and you can also, you know, give it like a curve if you want to. So those things are nice. You can also do something like just a float attribute, uh, which, which will just pick up the mask, but you won't be able to get additional control over it. So remap is better. Uh, you also have options like you can take a color map, which allow you to pick up a map or an image. So you can do that. Uh, and then line and radial, I'll just talk about. Okay. So, so this is nice. You know, you can just do this. So let's say that we want to have like multiple objects. Okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to just take, a box, a sphere, and uh, let's take a torus, or let's take a platonic solid. Okay, we'll take a platonic solid. And this is something I kind of learned, or you know, someone pointed out the enumerate node, which I had never used previously. And this is quite useful, especially if you if you're doing like the variance approach uh, for you know copying multiple objects to points. So what you can do is uh, let's pack these. So I'll pack each one of them. So control C, control V. And I will merge everything together. Now, usually what I would end up doing is, uh, let me just make them smaller. Yeah, so usually what I would end up doing is you would put in like a wrangle node and then generate a variant attribute and make this like 0, 1 and 2. So you would do that. But uh, what you can do with the enumerate is it will just do it for you automatically. So you just drop in an enumerate 
set the attribute to variant and it will just check the number of you know primitives coming in since these are packed like each object is just treated as one primitive and it'll just automatically assign a number to it so you don't need to do anything okay so we have our three uh, you know objects in here and if you want to check it you can like we can just and probably just keep this and we'll do a split left right and take a geometry spreadsheet and come to primitive and there you go so you have variant 0 1 and 2 and the nice thing about this is as you keep adding it'll just keep increasing the number so this becomes pretty much like an automatic way to do it okay so then I can come in here and I can just take uh, an integer node so you'll get an attribute at just integer and this is set to variant by default and again we will over here I will pick up I'll just set this to always and I'll pick up a remap attribute which again should be picking up mask and we'll set it to 2 and in copy to points just turn on variant and there you go so it automatically picks up you know so you have like boxes and the platonic solid is in there somewhere yeah, there you go. So these are platonic solids. Uh, let me just try to change that to something. Let me take, yeah, there you go. Maybe smaller still. Yeah. So it makes life a lot easier and everything is, as I said, everything is running through this one, like the topmost, you know, value that we have. And then you also get another one, which is you can take an attribute at just color. Okay, so we can take an attribute at just color and this can also be set to remap attribute and there you go so now it's picking the mask and then setting the color based on the mask but this also does something else which is interesting is that it has like a color correction node in there so this was uh, previously like if you have the lab tools then you have something in the lab tools for color like if you if you type in color you'll get labs color adjustment you know which is which has like the hue saturation stuff in here see but uh, now you can use the attribute adjust color node to do the same thing so I can just take this and then, you know, like if I enable color correction and I want to adjust the hue or the saturation, then, you know, so those things become quite useful. And as I said, like this thing, the nice thing about this is that if I, let's say I do control C, control V, and I just drop this in here, I'll just change this to, let's say, dodecahedron and, you know, get one more and see, there you go. So it automatically, you know, adds in everything and then let's say in the mask what I'll do is I'll just set it to step size see and we can start to lower the step size and you can get you know so you can do more interesting things with this you know that's that being the whole point and then I can turn on animation so you can do stuff like this so yeah so some pretty nice changes to the you know nice changes and additions to the attribute adjust node but what you can also do with this is beyond like the noise and the random values you now have an option for like these two are nice so you can do line which is like if you press enter see you have like a you get like a linear gradient which you can use to adjust it or you can do radial which is also fine so I can take a radial value see And if I want, I can take the P scale and let's flip this. So we'll make this smaller and that bigger. See, there you go. And let's try to change this to something else. I'll pick up two tone. Yeah, there you go. See, so now you can, you know, so th those two things are pretty cool. Like you can, you can have like more options. So it's good for doing like fall offs and things like that. So the point with the remap value being like what you were doing with the wrangle node and you know, like you would have to generate a ramp. So you, you do like the CH ramp and you know, you type in all of that, that you don't need to do that anymore. You can just use the attribute and just float and do it. Like, let's say if I take uh, a curve. Okay, so I'll just take a circle and let me just, you know, make it big. And let's say if I do a carve, and I'll take a resample and I will set this to subdivision curves and a little bit more and then I'll just use the curve view attribute so the curve view generates like a 0 to 1 value starting from the first point to the last point point. and then we can use that for doing 
uh, you know gradients or p scales or whatever based on the length of the curve okay so let's say if i just pick up this box and bring it here and i can do a copy to points yeah if you are unaware of how to set this to the curve you can you have a node called orientation along curve and you can just take that and that will see automatically do this for you but anyway so what i can do here is i can take a float and uh, we are using p scale but what i'll do is i'll set this to remap attribute and here i will type in curve view and there you go so i can you know readjust it from here or you know whatever i want to do with the curve i can do that with the curve see so this kind of stuff becomes a lot easier you know, than what you were doing before or at least like if you don't want to type in you know a lot of stuff in a wrangle node because this is really basic stuff but every time you had to you know uh, generate a wrangle node and then you know make stuff write stuff in there you can just do this with the float the only difference being like in the wrangle node it's good to organize because if you want if you're generating like five six ramps to control different aspects you can just have all of them in one wrangle node here you'll need like six different nodes for each uh, uh, each attribute that you want to have a ramp about but the difference being like it gives you a lot more functionality like that that being useful like you get step size and you have you know like a min max value you can also do post processing so you have those options so you know it just gives you more more options okay uh, as a final thing okay so as a final thing with the attribute adjust nodes uh, you have a couple of new ones uh, you have something called as a volume adjust fog and a volume noise fog so this is really useful for like i uh, a lot of the fog stuff that i do uh, i you know like if i want to generate fog in my scene i usually like make an actual physical fog object uh, using vdb and then i use like a volume warp to you know like fade in fade out so that stuff you can now just do with the attribute just fog node okay so let's say if i take a box and let's say if i just you know take this and what I'll do is I'll do VDB from polygons and I'll set this to density. There you go. Okay. And we'll do fill interior. So now the nice thing is like if I just wanted to fade out, okay, like let's say my camera is here and I wanted to like, you know, maybe fade out vertically and depth wise, I can just take a attributed just fog node and, you know, plug that in and we'll set this. So this is fog is density. So this should be on density. And then I can just say multiply with a line and there you go. Okay, so let's put it this way. Yeah, there you go. See, so you can do this. Okay. So this stuff like which earlier, like I would take a warp node and then create like a relative to bounding box and you know, do all of that stuff. This I can do here. Okay, and then let's say I'll just duplicate this plug in another one but this one I want to go vertical so let's do like we'll make this one in the y-axis but just you know see so I can sort of fade it out vertically as well so this becomes you know really useful and here let's say if I don't want like I wanted to you know fade out towards the background I can do like a enable remap ramp and then we can you know just have it in the middle like that so you get a lot of you know nice controls over this and then what you can also do is you have this option to add noise to it so if i say volume noise fog then i can just add some noise to this see but i'll set this to multiply as well see so i can do amplitude and can do element size and if you wanted like an animated fog or whatever so you can you know you can do those things so this is nice, but what is also, what you can also do now is the fog node can also adjust uh, like an SDF, like a surface node. So if I take a VDB from Polygon and the default, it generates a surface value. So let me just set this to Polygon and more points. Okay. And I'll do fill interior, we'll make it 0 0.03. Okay. And what I can do is again, if I just type in fog, and the only change I need to make is instead of density, I'll type in surface. 
and I'll set this to multiply. See, so I can actually, like this won't have any effect, but if I make it to noise, and I'll make it, uh, yeah, sorry, keep it to add, not multiply. See, so I can actually like, you know, so again, the stuff that you were doing through a volume warp is now possible here. Of course, if you want to do something more custom, like the stuff I was doing with my VDB and noise class, uh, like that series, you still need the volume warp because you do, you won't get that much level of control here. But you get enough, like if you're just generating something like, you know, simple, uh, like let's say if I want to make a rock out of this, I could probably try that. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, let's, let's do negative. Okay, I'm not going to try that. I, I, I haven't really gone through this too much, so I'm not entirely sure how to go about doing that, but there you go. Okay, so you can do stuff like this. And uh, again, like if I want to take and change this to maybe like a line, because this is interesting. So let's say if I just take this and I bring this in and I can, let's say if I bring in step size, see, so I can actually do some interesting things like that. And then maybe I can add in some noise to this. So I can say add volume noise fog. You have the same thing like this is volume noise fog. The only difference is this is type, this is using density and this is using surface, but it also has the option for displacement along normal. So which isn't a bad idea. So let's say if I plug this in, see, and then I can just, you know, displace the whole thing. So the nice thing about this is that it is actually expanding the volume as it is increasing, which otherwise, like if I just plug this in over here, and I try to add like a noise to this, you'll see that it clips. Okay, like if I do it to uh, Berlin and sorry, type in surface. Yeah. See, so as it starts to increase, it starts to clip. Okay, but here what it's doing is with the volume noise SDF, is as I start to increase it, it starts to increase the you know, the volume, the bounding box on the outside, so you won't get clipping. Okay, so this is this is actually pretty nice. So yeah, so these nodes are pretty cool for you know doing uh, some basic level of like VDB modeling, which previously all of the stuff, all of that stuff was you know within the uh, like in, in the realm of like warp nodes. Okay, like you apply a warp and then go inside and build all of that. So at some basic level, this makes life a little easier. So uh, nothing fancy, but you know, general day-to-day, -day, like making life a little easier kind of stuff. So I have successfully managed to create, you know, one tutorial for new features in Houdini 19. Like, yay.